Hey guys, um, I'm here with Chaz Kiss. We're going to talk a little bit about their newest song, Bite My Tongue. And yeah, I'm just going to uh, get right to it. Um, hi. Hi. Uh, my name is Chaz. We've got... I'm David. He plays drums. I'm J Dog. So. We've got Jeremy who plays guitar. Um, and we're super honored to be here. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, it's been really, really great to have you guys. I've I've followed your work for a little bit, so it's been really cool to be actually like actually get to meet you guys. So that was really cool. Oh, that's so fun. Yep, yeah, fun. yeah. So I wanted to like start with the basics. Uh, what started you guys in your music journey? Um. Well, I think we all probably have our own like personal stories with music. I'm sure. Um. But I think probably the most notable of like us as a group. Um, is that we ended up as roommates in a house. Like, we ended up as housemates. And um, because of that, we just started kind of playing music together. We were like, oh, this is pretty all right. Like, we should do this consistently and, like, you know, not be, like, in other bands or doing other things. Like, we just wanted to play together more because we worked really well together. Um, but I, I personally got started in music um, around maybe four years old or so. I've, it's just always been a very big part of my life. Uh, my parents are musicians, um, so I've always been a uh, part of it. How about how about you? Go ahead, sir. Um, mine was, was um, I mean, same as starting to play with them was because I just moved in with them and we, that was, you know, we just started playing music. Um, but I got into music when, when I was like 10 or 11 or so. And I was in like fourth grade, and there was a rule in my house where you had to play an instrument. Mm -hmm. So I picked drums because I loved, I thought the drums were the coolest instrument. So my mom made me play trumpet. <laughs> so um, I played trumpet for a year and hated it, and then instantly switched over to drums and just kind of fell in love with it. And that's, you know, it's pretty much all I've done since I was like 11 or so. So I guess uh, I started playing guitar when I was nine. Um, I got a acoustic guitar for my. Um, it was Christmas. It was right around my birthday. My birthday and Christmas are so close. It's, it's mm. practically the same. Practically the same. Um, so I got a guitar for my, I think it was ninth birthday. And uh, I had just moved to New York from Florida. So like I didn't really have a whole lot of friends. And I remember I was in, um, briefly in New York, I was in the Cub Scouts. And my, my friend that I went to go like to the meetings set his house with, uh, he, one day after one of the meetings, pulled out this big case and he pulled it open and it was a, um, he had a Jazz Master and a Stratocaster. Mm. And I remember he was just showing me the couple things that he learned while he was at, um, like, his lessons. And I thought it was the coolest thing in the world. And I just, um, I remember I always bugged my mom to go back to their house just so that, like, we could play guitar together and stuff. And then I got my own and it's been history ever since. That's so cool. Well, um... So basically, I, I noticed that you changed your name from Amelia Rose to Chaz Kiss. What was the reasoning for that? Yeah, so I went through a little bit of like a rebranding kind of thing because I felt that the music that I was making didn't really sound like Amelia Rose. Like I would look up, you know, Amelia Rose on Spotify. And first of all, there's like a hundred and they're all like singer songwriter country musicians, which no, no, no shade to singer songwriter country musicians. It's just not what I do. And I was like, I guess it really doesn't sound like that. Um, so I, I came up with this kind of like moniker thing um, because I also felt that like, I didn't have a lot of like stage presence as a person, um, especially even I would play in bands and stuff. Like I never really felt like I could command a stage very well. I always felt too anxious and awkward, um, but I was like, maybe if I like came up with like a stage persona, it would hmm. maybe help me. But so I came up with the name because my grandfather's name was Charlie, but he went by Chaz. And my gr grandmother's last name um, was Michalowskis, which the last hmm. part of it was. So I took the first part of his name for the first name and the last part of her name for the last name. And I thought it just kind of sounded more edgy, but not like, you know, you know, blood tooth or something. Like <laughs> blood fang. Yeah. <laughs> Sounded, like, cool. Because, you know, the thing is, like, we don't necessarily do, like, 
heavy metal music, but I think our music could be categorized as like like with a feeling, it's like cool music, and I think it kind of sounds like that. And that's right. <laughs> <laughs> and the second that we uh, that I changed my name, I I found so much stage presence, and nothing scared me anymore, and hmm. it just felt a lot more. I felt like I could connect more easily with an audience, especially because it made my like at home connections a lot stronger. Like, oh, like these people know me as Amelia, you know, and it's separate and it feels a lot better that way. Yeah, no, that totally makes sense. How did you come up with the stories and the lyrics behind your work? Um, well, the funny thing is, is that everything, <laughs> unfortunately, everything in my music is a true story that happened to myself. Um, I've, I've always envied people who can kind of like write about other things or write about like imaginary situations. Um, that seems very cool for them, but, um, <laughs> but I've never been able to really do that successfully without it sounding really cheesy. Um, so there's very few sections of my lyrics that are not based on real stories. And if they aren't based on real stories, it's just cause I thought the words sounded really good together. Um, but so yeah, they come from, they come from the truth. I, um, it's how I, it's how I kind of process everything in my life that's kind of happened, I think. That's cool because, uh, there's just a lot of concrete imagery that just feels fantastical in your, in your work. So even though it like has the, the, the grounding of the real, real life stories that you were able to use the words that you're using or the right, the words that you write to create that fantastical story and make it dramatic and make it really big. And I thought that was really cool. That fantastical. That's fun. Thank you. Yeah, no, you definitely have like that fantastical edge, but also it's like, it definitely is edgy. So I don't know. It really defies genre which i found really really cool in the like where i discovered you so because it's just like everybody seems to like they're trying to fit a blueprint and you guys don't and you guys make it your own thing and it's very unique and very cool thank, thank you. you yeah, yeah I, I, that means a lot especially coming from someone who like reviews and listens to a lot of music <laughs> um but i think a big part of that is because our influences are all like kind of drastically different as people it kind of meshes together to this interesting kind of thing so I'm glad that I'm glad that you think that way yeah well so when did you guys start playing together you guys seemed like you guys knew each other quite a while so tell me a little bit about how you guys got to know each other so we we go uh at least Amelia and I go really far back um because my family moved into a house that her family was renting so we were renting it from them and briefly you and I met you know years and years ago like you know, 10 plus years ago. I think. Yeah, I was like six. Yeah, yeah wow. I think like almost 15 years ago. Yeah. Um, no, it was like something like it, right? Yeah. 15 years ago. Um, and I remember it because I, we went into the basement of the house that, that his family was renting. And the first thing that, and I didn't really know what was going on. I was six years old. I didn't know I was even moving probably. I just thought people were over. Um, and I said to him and uh, his sister, I said, do you guys want to write a song? And we went in the basement, supposedly, and wrote a song. And um, his sister ended up as my bass player in one of my bands for a while. Um, and then we all moved back into that house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's kind of awesome. like a complicated, like up, down and around type story. It's like it's a hard like way to, um, you know, describe it just because it's, it's been so long and it's been so many like twists and turns along the way. But definitely, you know, that kind of sums it up to a, to a degree. Um, we started playing our first show was in January. January. Yeah. Um, this year? Our, yes, yeah. this yeah. year. What? That, that no way. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and we played at, it was a... Hudson Valley, like... Motor Valley. Spikers. Yeah. Yeah. Bikers Network. Bikers yeah, Network. I was, yeah, I was doing um, a bit of filming for this, like, Biker Network thing that they, were, they had up here. And uh, I was just, you know, boom operating and all that kind of stuff. And uh, all of a sudden, the band that was supposed to play that day or, or the, the following day dropped out. And they're like, well, you're in a band, right? Why don't, you know, why don't you guys come up and play? So I called them and they're like, oh, yeah, well, let's do it, you know? Yeah. And, and we this this was before we'd ever, this, this is like, we didn't really know. We only knew just, you know. David had been living with us for like three months, Two four months. Two to three months. Yeah. Yeah, three months or so. Yeah, I moved um, in November. 
Yeah. Yeah, and so David like, and I went months. to high school together. That's how we know each other. We it's were, a small town. It's yeah. a small town. We're only so. yeah, it's a very small town. We're only like a year apart or so, and we were both in bands that played a lot locally, um, at the same time. So we kind of like cross paths. Cross paths every yeah. once in a while. Yeah. Um, but um, but yeah, and then he became our roommate because we lived in that house that was rented a long time ago. It's a lo- long thing, but yeah, he, he, so we needed another roommate and David was, he wanted a place to live. <laughs> and so we said, okay. Yeah, yeah. Cool, yeah. Well, thanks for telling me about your guys' like, I guess origin story, but tell me a little bit more about that first por- uh, first performance. Cause I didn't realize that you guys just started performing it in January. That's pretty cool. Well, so we were playing at this like motorcycle event thing um, in January of 2020. Two. Yes. This was this. Um, yeah. <laughs> I forgot what year we were. Doing. Yeah, me too. For a um, second. <laughs> yeah, we were playing at this at this thing, and I remember I was really nervous. It was on a big stage, and um, I didn't really know what was going on. We had just written out a set list like the day before, and um, I remember specifically too, like, you know, I, I'm like a kind of smaller girl and they're like at this biker thing like there were <laughs> one or two other girls total no um, that's not true. it felt like that at the time and i was like kind of i don't know like i remember it because it was the first gig that i had had in a while mm. and yeah there were just some some things i had to be like where are you guys <laughs> Yeah, and I was like yeah, working. Was I was like working it too. It, it was so. a little sketchy. I guess that's the way to put it yeah. like nicely. Like I don't know, some of the interactions I had were interesting, but a lot <laughs> of them were like I don't mean to. It's just what I remember, you know, like the way right. you remember things. Yeah, I was like not and the greatest. We still thing get first. recognized from that too. That's yeah. really <laughs> yes. Yeah, so there were a lot of people there. <laughs> yeah, there were like what? There like I don't know the final number, but it had to have been at least four hundred. Yeah, there wow. were a lot of people. And it was our first show ever that we had played all together in this like order. Yeah. Um, and it was like a, it was like kind of an event, like a, like a, you know, people are like having vendors and stuff, and like it's yeah. in this big, big room. Um, and and we were there playing like Fiona Apple and like <laughs> not ACDC. Yeah. Right. Well, the the band that was the band that dropped was a Black Sabbath cover band. Yeah. <laughs> so like. Very different vibe. <laughs> Very different vibe. But it, I mean. I don't know. I was I was kind of bummed. I was like, dang, man. Yeah. I was really trying to see that van. Like, I, I like that. Um, but but yeah. So I think that was that was our first show that we played. Um, but David played bass for us, like kind of minimal, like one or two shows maybe um, before one. that. But so we consider the motorcycle thing as our first show because that was where he was playing drums. And, yeah, and um, it was just the, it was just it was just the, the three, just of, us. The three yeah. of us. There was no one else in our, our lineup. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we played. Fall fest, but it was like a very brief. Man, you wasn't on drums. Right, yeah, I you was were on drums. Right. Wait, did you play bass with us at the time? No, no. It was just you, me, and Kurt. Oh, so yeah, you three, and I showed yeah. up, and then I mixed that, your guys' set. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Oh man, that was a crazy day. Yeah. But and then um, the uh, for Halloween, we had a Halloween show that I played bass on. Yeah. We did. Um, yes. Yep. That was a. I um, remember this. <laughs> in New Paltz. It was at Arrowwood. Outside. Oh yeah, with with Ramona. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah, just recollecting yeah. things over here. It's, it's, it's yeah. been a hell of a it's been a hell of a year, half year, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it hasn't even been a year yet. That's that's yeah. what's wild to me. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, um, well, I mean, with that being said, I I wanted to get into the song song breakdown. Um, kind of what I was thinking is just like stopping after each verse and have you guys talk a little bit about it. In case of you, you are. I know we went into the chorus a little bit, but do you want to talk a little bit about the first verse? So what's fun about Bite My Tongue is it's a song I wrote like two years ago on piano and I played it... um, I'm a live streamer and I played it on stream so much that I got sick of the song. Um, I'm I'm what I consider to be like a very bad like commercial live streamer. <laughs> like I'm I love live streaming and I love singing, but I have a very hard time with like song requests and like live learns and stuff. Like I just get anxious and awkward and weird. So 
I like overplayed Bite My Tongue and I like took it off of my request list. I was like, I'm not playing this song anymore. Like it's too overdone in my in my head and it's made me not like the song. Hmm. Um, just because, you know, you play it maybe yeah. twice a night, every single night, especially at that time. Like it was early, it was late 2020, especially when I started feeling that way. And I was doing like six hour live streams on an audio only app. I was doing six to eight hours every single night of just singing and just wow. music. And so I would end up playing the same songs like multiple times. And I got very like exhausted. Um, and it made a lot of those songs that I used to play back then kind of feel like bring up that feeling again. So mm. I stopped playing the song and I was like, I'm only going to play my new songs that, you know, I've wrote on Twitch and like, it'll just be a different vibe. Like nobody will really know this song. Like it's okay. <clears throat> and me and David were home one night and I was kind of going through my SoundCloud demos on an Instagram live stream. And I was just kind of like laughing at them being like, oh wow, like some of these songs have come such a far away. Like it's really cool to hear the beginning stages of them. And David walks in as I'm maybe as I'm playing by my tongue or something like the demo of it from 2020, like from mm -hmm. way back. And he was like, this goes hard. This is a good <laughs> song. And I was like, yeah, it's okay. Like, it's not my best. Like, I don't, I don't play it anymore, really. But it is fun. It's, it's definitely fun. And then David was like, imagine it with these, like, breakdowns, though. Like, imagine if you, like, imagine playing it live with, like, a band. And I was like, oh, you know what? <laughs> that, that would be pretty sweet. I'm not going to lie. Like, that would be fun. And then we, the next day or over the next couple of days, um, we played it in our basement, like just the three of us, like just trying to learn it. And it was sweet. It was really cool. Mm. And we ended up adding some like different pieces to it. Like there wasn't, like, obviously there wasn't a guitar solo at the end. I don't play guitar. Um, <laughs> and it just became this kind of like monster of itself and this like monster of a song and it really wasn't that on the demo at all it was just kind of experimental and weird um but so yeah so this song had would not be here today <laughs> if david hadn't revived it so everyone say thank you david good job david <laughs> <laughs> um but anyways but about the first verse i wrote it in 2020 i wrote the song about um an ex-friend that i had who um it was one of those friends that's like kind of always in love with you no matter what you say or do and it's just kind of this on and off thing but like they feel so like nice but it's not there's still this kind of underlying thing of um not so good thoughts and things so it's about it's about that kind of feeling of the verses are tense and awkward but then it's like oh but take me home like you're so simpatico like it's just kind of playful because that's how that friendship felt to me. Sweet. <laughs> All right, I'm going to keep playing. Yeah, that chorus is so fun. I love that. Thanks. Yeah. Tell me a little bit what about about like what inspired that melody, especially that at the very end of that first chorus. Um, yeah, a lot of my earlier piano songs, I'm self-taught um, at piano, so I'm not very classically trained. And a lot of my musical inspiration is like weird artists that make weird sounds. I love like uh, Juju and like uh, Fiona Apple and Alanis Morissette's like weird album. Those are like my favorites. And I, especially at the time, was really influenced by it. And so I ended up writing a lot of like weird, weird melody songs that had weird stops and starts. I also was at home playing piano for like, you know, two to six hours a night. And I was bored. And that kind of isolation of the pandemic and also of just being alone in a room with a piano for a long time kind of lended itself to a lot of these weird songs. Um, 
I have another song called Mosquito that's under Amelia Rose still, and that song was also very, like, weird. Um, but, yeah, there's definitely a place in my heart for the, the weird songs. Um, but it's been really interesting to be collaborating and writing other things as well. I think there's a way to have a very kind of happy balance between the two. But this chorus, and especially once both of these guys got on the song, it kind of felt more blended. The piano vocal demo of the song was much more like jumpy. Hmm. I think this was more like, it kind of makes you feel like you're on a wave, I feel like. Yeah, no, definitely. Especially as the song progresses um, and as it like, as, as it flows more into that climax in the very end of the song, which we could talk a little bit more about. Yeah, cool. Well, I'm gonna keep playing. Hungry for answers. I'm just not really pretending anymore. It's the sugar on his tongue, yeah, that's my weakness. I caught a case of you. You were unapologetic, but I still don't feel better. Still don't feel better. Still don't feel better. Yeah, I really like that second verse. It just really uh, pairs really well with the first verse, but it also starts, like I said, flowing a little bit more. And the first verse is just a little bit rougher and scratchier almost. And I think that's really cool. It pairs well with the first, very first uh, stanza of the first verse. So it's really cool. Yeah, I actually, I wrote the second verse in the studio in the like re-recording of the song. There was okay. a different second verse. Um, but I didn't like the lyrics. It didn't really, it was a little too negative And I was like, I don't really want this out there if it's going to be that way. Hmm. Um, so I like sat down for like 10 minutes and wrote the second verse. I was like, okay, that's better at least. So <laughs> we landed on and I was like, I don't really want to go back. It feels, it fits, like you said, like it fits with the first verse. It's kind of the same structurally. Um, but I remember sitting there for like 10 minutes and my, um, I can't remember if it was you that was tracking the vocal or my dad at the time, but um, I remember being like, give me five minutes and I'll come up with something different, but I don't want to record the final vocal of the second verse in that other right, stanza that of way. lyrics. Yeah. So. Hmm. You know what's interesting is I'm kind of listening back to it. For some reason, I, I get a little bit of like early um, Linkin Park as far as like how like like the record scratch kind of feel to it. Yeah, I, don't know, I see what you mean like synthy kind of i don't know i didn't i didn't realize it was like that until just now listening to it that's cool just, it's I don't always know. No, that's always cool to like just reimagine something there. you know like yeah. that's what happened when david and i were listening to the song that time right. it's like we were just reimagining the song because i yeah. had this very clear picture of what the song sounded like and david was like no imagine it like this or just different wording of what it already was yeah and that's it was just something it i was even... thinking about sitting here listening to it yeah yeah, no, that's really cool. And I mean, like, I know we were talking a little bit about our uh, about rock music, but yeah, I, I could definitely sense that multiple generate genre inspiration yeah. in this yeah, song in particular. Movie, you know? yeah, yeah, it's really cool. <laughs>
That's so cool. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, just I wanted to take a moment and applaud your vocal control. I don't know anything too much about like the theory behind vocals or anything like that, but oh my gosh, dude, pretty impressive. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, a lot of the vocal inspiration at the end, um, I'm a big fan of a band called Nothing But Thieves, and a lot of the times they have these like kind of insane like vocal breakdowns, and um, that was really what I wanted with the song, and I think think it has been achieved i think it worked yeah for sure especially especially since it like the lyrics in the chorus are pretty straightforward it lets the um it gives room for the for the melody to breathe like and just do its whole thing so it's really cool yeah any final thoughts about the song of anything else that you want to talk about um yeah i mean you know this was the first song that like we started collaborating on. I mean, I think if we had had more time, um, we would have done more things. I know you wanted to do more with the drums and stuff than what was there. Um, but I think it felt really cool to, especially like with you and the guitar part, to just kind of let you like just do your thing. Yeah. yeah. To hear it. In hearing the final, I literally didn't even, I wasn't even in the room when he was tracking the guitar part, because I wasn't helping. Like, I don't know anything about guitars. So I was just sitting there being like, yeah, this sounds amazing, like, to everything he was playing. And he was like, what? you?" Uh. So I ended up, like, leaving the room and just being like, I think it's better if I'm not even here. Hmm. And, um, and so I heard the final guitar part when I heard the, like, first right. mix of the song. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what? Like, this is so crazy. Like, I don't even know where that came from, but... So that was really cool for me. Yeah, it was really quick for whatever it's worth. Really? Uh, That's cool. Yeah, I, I remember, I can't remember what I had going on that day, but we, it was right as we were about to leave for Nashville, we were going, well, actually, mm. no, it was Pennsylvania. We were going to Pennsylvania and then Nashville. And it, I remember we were just thinking, okay, we got to track some of these things. So while we're on the road, we can have these kind of releasable or at least get ready to be released. And, you know, we were going to be gone for like, you two know, months. yeah, like two months, we were going to be gone for two months, you know, pretty much. And then, you know, the time that we were back, we were busy working or, you know, seeing other people that we haven't seen or whatever, you know, working on music stuff. And um, I just remember we did two songs that day and one of them was Bought My Tongue. And uh, it was very fast. We'd set the amp up in the, in the, in the closet and put some mics in front of it. And uh, it was probably done within like an hour or something something like that we've been playing it for so long at that point like i just had it so kind of memorized the only thing that was impromptu was the solo i just kind of started like riffing on it and it just ended up how it was you know that's really cool and it, it harmonizes really beautifully with the vocals and i i really like how no they they all just work really well together like you guys all really work together musically and yeah i'm looking forward to hearing more from you guys as a team because that like yeah, it just it's definitely a different shift from your previous music and um yeah, I mean it's both are great but also like it's just like this new chapter for sure and I, I that I'm sensing. So, it's really cool to, to be able to witness that. Yeah, I think like I've kind of gone over it in my head a lot, but I in the pandemic have been on this like quest to like make the middle school version of myself happy hmm. because I think that middle school is that time in your life where you're like trying new things and then you eventually find something you're like wow this is who I want to be and then it kind of gets like punched out of you by society and everything um at least that's yeah. what happened to me um I definitely in high school was a completely different person than what I was inside um especially like there's not a lot of alternatively styled people in my immediate vicinity where I was Mm -hmm. um, so I really felt like a sore thumb. But yeah, I think that especially like rock and heavier music has always been a really prominent part of my life. And um, all of ours. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. All three of ours. Yeah. Um, but I think but talking about the switch from like the music I was putting out to this. Yeah. It's it was just that I was alone. Like I didn't have other musicians to collaborate with. So I and I don't like I said, I don't play guitar um i don't play drums so it was it would be difficult to kind of produce that sound on my own i think it would come across very like manufactured you know and something that you know we do and something that I, you know i'm very passionate for is writing a bunch of differently styled songs 
and what's so great about this group, you know, is that we can kind of make it work really well and then it, it, it feels authentic. It doesn't feel like we're trying to do it. It just kind of works. Yeah. You know? I mean, we all listen to all sorts of music. I mm-hmm. mean, I don't know, like Jeremy and I are big, you know, reggae fans, which is yeah. mm. <laughs> with what we play, yeah. you know, like. But it's there, you know. Yeah, I listen to a lot of jazz. and. You know. I can sense the jazz influence for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, I also, for it, when I was in college for a little while in high school, I did study jazz and stuff. And oh, I, cool. Yeah, and brought brought that into, you know, playing. Jazz, jazz is awesome. It is yeah. awesome. Jazz is awesome. Yeah, but I was going to add earlier, it's cool because we all have very similar, like, music interests and stuff, but um, because they're all slightly different and because we all play different styles of guitar, like, I played a lot of punk and jazz. Jeremy played a lot of metal, you know, you've had your own stuff that was all the stuff that was released before, like... <laughs> No, I just mean it's cool because we all played, you know, have completely different influences. But then when we put them all together, it creates one sound. So no matter yeah. what style the song is supposed yeah. to be in, just the way it all works together, it always kind of sounds still like right. us. And the, we've all, you know, played with other people before. You know, we've all kind of came from older bands, you know, so we're all very experienced with, you know, what goes on behind the scenes and, like, you know, how you kind of have to keep everything rolling and, mm-hmm. you know. We're all, like, I remember playing in January, our first show, I remember being like, this is, you know, there were 400 people there, but I was like, I, you know, I know you, you know, you mentioned you were nervous, but like, I was like, yeah, it's fine, you know. <laughs> yeah. This isn't anything new for any of us, you know, we've all done it before. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, that helps a lot when you're not like, you know. Like brand new to a band. Right, or, or there's someone mm. in your group that is, and you have yeah. to like yeah. kind of get them into the, you know, the swing of it. We, ne- we didn't have to do any of that. We've you know, all been yeah. playing our instruments for, for like, like ten years. Yeah. At least. yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. And then the yeah. pacing of setting up and everything like that is, has its own. It's its own beast too. Yeah. yeah, I think I think it's really cool that you know we've done so much. We've written so much in such a short amount of time. You know, it's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, what are your guys' plans next? Do you guys have anything in the works? Yeah. So we just got off of a two month like DIY tour. We went. Uh, from New York, Pennsylvania, to North Carolina, Alabama, Atlanta, Florida, and then back up to New York. I might even and, and Nashville. Yep, yeah, sorry, I forgot about that. And Philly. Um, and Philly. And Philly. Yeah. So it was a lot of a lot and of. And the city. <laughs> all, and all, many, we were all, all right, over all the right. place. We yes, a lot of places. Um, very different kind of venues each time. Sometimes you're playing in a basement, and sometimes you're playing in an empty restaurant. Sometimes you're playing at a frat house. It really just depends. Um, but I think that, you know, we're happy to be home for the next couple months. Um, and I'm really excited to keep, continue recording. Um, we have some things in the works to be released that I'm very excited about. And I think that will happen sooner than later, hopefully before the end of the summer. Um, we just got to get some finalizing stuff in order. (laughs) Um, cool. But I'm excited about that. And then, like I said, the fall is kind of up in the air right now. We're kind of waiting to hear back on a couple things. But yeah, so that's kind of what's on the horizon for us is a lot of releases. Um, man, I'm sorry. Um, a lot of releases and playing slightly less shows, but I'm sure that we're going to make quite a killer comeback in the spring. Yeah, a lot of, yeah. A lot of tracking. That's, that's kind yeah. of our plan. Yeah. Tracking and writing. That's our, that's our thing right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Sweet. Yeah, nice to meet you guys. Uh, I'll definitely talk with you guys more in the future. Cool. Yeah. This was a great yeah, time. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Again, nice to meet you guys. It was really nice to chat with you. And yeah, see you guys next time. Yeah. yeah thanks, yeah. everybody, for watching. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, guys. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye.